All right, in my uh, Hyper Soul Winning Study series, I talked about some good gospel tracks that I would recommend. And I said I'm going to do a little video on them, just showing some of them. So that just happens to be this video. Uh, just going to show you a couple here really quickly. Um, this is one, just a real simple one. This is made by uh, Peter Ruckman. And um, I'm going to do my best to show these. I'm not going to set up the overhead camera and everything. But uh, Way to Heaven... And it just starts out, you know, um, repent of sin. And it explains that what it means there. It doesn't mean turn from all your sins and all this other stuff. You need to understand that you're a sinner, you know. And over there, um, same Savior for all. Gives the scriptures. And on the back, same life for all. Okay, and gives the scriptures. Just a real small little track, very small. I keep them in my shirt pocket, you know, just in case the Lord opens up that chance for me to speak to somebody. And, you know, you just quickly uh, get into a conversation and say, hey, let me just give you something. Hand it to them. Um, just, a, just a real basic understanding of the gospel. Um, another type that we've given out quite a bit, sent out and everything else. Um, these right here make it even fancy for you, you know fellowship track league um, these ones here there's a this one you have this is kind of a fun one to put out you know especially around Halloween time death happens every day and you, you can write your you know material or your uh, website or whatever on the back there my wife had written our website there fellowship track league but uh, these are good tracks um, again, they're, they're nothing real, uh, overly complicated. Here you have the same title. Is there something missing in your life? Right there, you can see. And, uh, just little, again, just real short, you know, little tracks. Um, these are, these are fun if you get like a, you know, junk mail coming and it has the self-addressed stamped envelope called Sassy's, S-A-S-E, you know, and uh, you get those, you can put one of these in, you know, is something missing in your life, send it back to the people that sent you the junk mail. Uh, that's kind of fun. Um, for a long time, we were putting them in with bills and things too. Um, haven't done that in a while. Got to get back to that practice again. But this one here, a little funny story about this. Um, my wife had actually sent this to a guy in the military uh, he was a colonel or something like this, and, and uh, I forget how we had this, whatever else. And he calls me up, and he, just, you know, somehow finds a phone number of the place I'm staying at, where I'm living, and yet I didn't have the phone number listed at all. You know, just and I was like, how'd you get the phone number? And he's like, just simple search. And I'm like, yeah, right, <laughs> okay. You're in the military. You're you're, you know finding some interesting, you know, information and whatnot to get, you know, the phone number where I'm at. Just thought that was interesting. But uh, he was trying to threaten me, all kinds of stuff, you know, and things. And and, uh, and I basically, it, you know, at first it kind of weirded me out because this guy's like, you know, there could be an investigation here and blah, blah. And, I, and then Lord just kind of gave me the idea. I did a video on it after this whole thing happened, but a couple of years back. And I said, uh, what was this thing that was sent to you? And this is the one. He's like, well, it's some kind of a, a thing and it has a soldier on the front. And I said, what was it about? And he was like, some kind of a gospel presentation or something. I said, what did it say? And he's like, okay, well, just don't, I don't want any of that stuff being sent again. You know, thank you. Goodbye. You know, I was going to say, okay, if I get him to the point of reading the thing, we would have had a good time. But he didn't want to read it for some reason. Um, of course, you have the uh, chick tracks. You know, and, um, you know, um, you know, with these, I mean, there's, you know, I don't have a problem with a lot of the stuff that's done in here and stuff. This is more of the uh, kind of convict you if you're a Christian not putting out gospel tracts, and, uh, which is fine. Um, but then you get, like, this is the classic chick track, you know, right here. And I had a brother write to me recently, and he said, what about the thing of, you know... Uh, you know, he was, uh, here you have him, he's in the grave, you know, kind of sleeping, 
and then over here he's you know arising and stuff like this I don't think that it was intended there by Jack Chick to show that this was like a long span of time. He's just trying to show that the guy died, he's in the grave, and his soul leaves, okay? Which, you know, uh, the soul does go to hell. And, um, you know, you read about that with the rich man that goes, his soul goes down to hell. Okay, if somebody dies, some wicked person dies, you can go there and you can see their body, okay? But their soul is in hell All right so that's what's going on there but my issue with the chick tracks which um has been brought up by different brethren is it says uh if you just trusted jesus as your savior you have just begun a wonderful new life with him now number one read your bible kjv every day um to get to know jesus christ better i agree number two talk to god in prayer every day i agree number three it's kind of bad um, be baptized, worship, fellowship, and serve with other Christians in a church where Christ is preached and the Bible is the final authority. It's kind of like, I can understand back when this was written, there might have been some argument there, but now it's just like these church buildings are just totally wicked and you're going to be harming people by sending them there. But, you know, then you can say, well, yes, but if they get truly saved, the Holy Spirit's going to lead them and things. I know. And we've all gone through that journey of, uh, you know, going to different church buildings and stuff like that. Lord will lead you out of it if you want the truth. So, but the other issue I have with a lot of this stuff is, uh, you know, some of the depictions of, you know, angels, you know, that you get these winged angels and stuff. No such thing in Scripture. And you say, yeah, but, you know, lost people, they aren't going to understand. It's, yeah, but, you know... It's like you're, you're getting them in by telling them things that are contrary to what the scriptures say. And, and I understand. I understand the, the, the thing of using art to you know, get people thinking about heavenly things. And they imagine angels being with wings. But So I have mixed emotions about chick tracks. I don't have a problem with, with them saying, you know, repent of sins or things like that. Because again, in context, Bible-believing Christians know what repent of sins means. Okay, it's only the Jack Hiles wicked satanic cult and the followers of Jack Hiles, um, mostly Anderson and his cult. Um, and, I mean, it goes back to it again. I've proved that. But it's mostly those that are making the big deal about the thing of repenting of sins. Okay, uh, they're trying to make it into this works gospel and all this other stuff. It's not works. All right, just understanding that you're a sinner and that you can't save yourself. It's, you know, and there needs to be that contrition there of saying, I've sinned against God. I need to change this. I don't want to keep this life of sin. God, please help me. And it doesn't mean you become sinlessly perfect afterwards. It's just your attitude towards your sin changes. So, um, but some newer style tracks that I've been uh, really enjoying is this uh, soccer ball and this coin. <laughs> um, my friend John Davis from over in England a uh, real good friend of the ministry, he sent us these, and they have a little gospel, you know, presentation, just basic. You know, I mean, it's not a theological discourse on what it takes to be saved. Again, you know, these are seeds, brethren, okay? You just take these. You can put these in a restaurant as a coaster, you know, like that, or just take them um, benches in a grocery or in a shopping mall or whatever else, put them down. You can carry these things in your pocket, you know, just take them out, and these are these are intended to be seeds, it gets them thinking. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't know any. They don't know the first thing about Jesus Christ. They've never heard one verse of Scripture from the King James Bible. You don't have to give them some, you know, go and hand some big old theological treatise on, you know, the Godhead and justification and the blood atonement and whatever else. It's too much. Okay? Plant seeds. You see? That's what this stuff is all about. And I mean, I'll give you a dollar if you can do it. Oh, wait. It's actually a tract. Another one there. You can see. Pretty neat. And it has a you know, good little gospel message on the back there. These are fun too. You know, you just put these. You don't even have to be going up and handing them to people and stuff like this. I mean, the Lord gives you an opportunity to, to hand somebody a gospel tract. You say, oh, here you go. This is for you to read. Great. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, James and Patrick Patel, um, ex-Catholics for Christ, 
they go out on the street, one of them will be reading from the Bible and doing some street preaching, and they'll have other people there, and they'll just be standing there going like this to passers-by. Here you go. Get the next tract. Here you go. You know, fine. There's a lot of ways to plant the seeds. Okay, a lot of good ways. But something like this, this is what you can start out with, brethren. Get some something like this. I would be real careful to just find this type of stuff. I mean, if it's not a Bible-believing website that's putting this out, I'd stay away from it because I know people that have gotten these dollar bills or million dollar bills or whatever else, and it quotes new versions. Uh, don't put out new version tracks, okay? They're useless. Um, but this is great. I mean, you just take these around. You just put these in a grocery store or something like that or some other place. Just slip it on the shelf and go on about your business. You know, put them in your pocket or whatever else. Just take it out and just, you know, put it out there. It's a seed, you see? You're planting seeds. And again, you know, you're, all you want to do there is you're just trying to put uh, people in contact with the Lord. So, um, but then John Davis also has um, little, neat little booklets like this. Uh, Very soon millions of people shall suddenly disappear. Put something like that in a bathroom, you know, someplace or whatever else. Again, you know, a little bit of advice. Don't put tracks on top of the toilet. <laughs> You know, like on the back of the toilet where the, the, the you know, tank is on the back. It's certainly not on the toilet seat either, but don't put it near the toilet because then it's people associate, oh, it's dirty and whatever else. Put it up on top of the paper towel dispenser or someplace else that's there that people can see it, okay? And, you know, it's kind of neat. It's kind of a spinoff of Ruckman's a little booklet, you know, that he has there. You have very soon millions of people shall suddenly disappear, and then you flip it over and it says... Why have millions of people suddenly disappeared <laughs> in case they missed it? And it goes into some more stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of good. Actually, there's the kind of the cover of Ruckman's um, booklet. We used to hand them things out just by the hundreds years ago. But, you know, it gets into the thing of what they should do and things like that. If they miss the rapture, um, you know, it's good color illustrations and things, too. Really, really good. But... Recently, um, Brother John sent me a bunch of things, and uh, we we just we love putting out stuff from the UK here because it just confuses people like crazy. <laughs> They're going probably thinking, "Who's here from from England?" You know, handing out gospel tracts and things, and and we you know we've given things to people too, so it's great. But uh, he really has some good stuff. So I'm gonna what I did is I actually you know we like go out and we got like pockets stuffed and things and. We look forward to winter time because we can wear our winter coats then and we got tracks all through the things. Um, but summertime, you can't carry quite as many. And, you know, we always like, we'll run into somebody and we're like witnessing to them and it's like, ah, oh, I just need that booklet. And can I give you something? Well, you know, I don't know. It's like if we just had the booklet right there, it'd work out much better. So, went to Kmart and invested in this cheap briefcase. And this thing is filled with tracks. So, um, just show you a couple of things here quickly. Uh, have to do the unboxing here. We have a big stack of the dollar bill tracks right there, which is nice. We have uh, a whole bunch of these things, little booklets, the, the disappearing rapture thing there. Um, is there life after death? Another good one. Um, the missing piece there, there, yeah. And um, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Right there, it's another good one. And um, where are they now? Talking about uh, where are they now, and then where will you be? On the back, talking about different celebrities. You know, people worship celebrities. This is a good one. You know. Again, you can put this in places where people are sitting down and they you know, have to wait for something. It's a bench or something outside of a pharmacy or a doctor's office or whatever else. Just, you know, there's so many different options there. Um, and, of course, we have, I've been also carrying um, these local church Bible publishers giveaway Bibles. And I have other ones, too, that I can give people. And I carry one of these in my briefcase. 
You know, and whenever I leave the house, I, this thing goes with me. I don't carry it through the grocery store or anything, but it's it's in the vehicle out there and everything else. I'll just show you a couple other things here. Um, he has bigger booklets as well, Life Than Eternity. Uh, I have a bunch of copies of that. And... This is a good one too. You have, um, I guess this is maybe something that you give away or, or that kind of looks like England, English money or whatever else. I'm not really sure. But these are fun too to put out, kind of make get people's attention. This is one that I carry because we do run into Jehovah's Witnesses fairly frequently. Jesus Christ is God. So... Uh, let's see, what else do I have here? Another one, designed or not designed? That is the question. See it there? Stack of those. Uh, good one to put around where there's motorcycle, like a motorcycle shop or, you know, things like that. Suzuki Hayabusa on there. John's cool motorcycle that he had. It's faster than my bike I used to have. I had a Ninja ZX-11, but for you motorcyclists out there, it was before the Hayabusa came out, you know, the fastest bike on the road at that time, but <laughs> it's another issue. But uh, just I have some more up front here and things and see if there's anything else different that I don't have. Uh, let's see, Eternity 1. Yeah, this is another good one. Um, does anyone really care? You know, again, it's just so many different things here that you can put out. But, uh, you know, maybe you can use some of this stuff as a suggestion. I mean, um, get a briefcase, uh, put some chick tracks in it, put some fellowship track leagues in it. Or, or, you know, if you're in the UK or even, I mean, he ships around too and things, I'm pretty sure. Um, but... I mean, you know, get some stuff from John Davis. He's got some really good, you know, things out there. Uh, stuff that you can give, more detailed booklets and, and, you know, whatever else that you can give away. So, again, what is the point of tracting? The point of gospel tracting is not to, you know, oh, we're going to get millions of people saved by gospel tracting. You're planting seeds, brethren. Um, you plant seeds. Somebody else can water those seeds, and God will give the increase. Um, I remember uh, when I was a little boy, this uh, this exact gospel tract right here. I remember somebody gave me a copy of that thing, and I remember reading that as a little boy. And it made an impression on me, and um, you know, it's something I never forgot. So you you know, these things do change people's lives, and. You know, uh, you can get really creative with your gospel tracting and, uh, you know, especially things like this. I mean, dollar bills or, or whatever else, uh, you know, these little soccer ball things here and stuff like that. Again, and, you know, and they can go to John Davis's um, website there and, and uh, you know, find out some more things. I don't have any of them up here right now, but there's also metal gospel coins john davis sells some and um and then there's also ones that are aluminum i've showed those in other studies i don't think i have any up here right now but they're nice i mean you can carry them in your pocket they're they're waterproof so that you can you know go outside you're walking taking a hike you know on, on a hiking trail or something like that find an interesting place to drop a coin where people are going to see it i mean i've literally seen times where we're out and i remember i was with my wife the one time and uh, we were walking in this park, and we literally took a gospel coin, put it on the, we were like this old historical bridge, put it on the, you know, side of the bridge there, you know, that where you stand there and look down into the river and whatever, put it just right there like that, literally turned and walked over to the other side of the bridge, standing there talking. It was like maybe a minute, and this young girl looked like, you know, maybe 10, 11 years old. And she's walking along, and I see her. She goes, and she looks at the coin, goes over, stands there, looks to the side, looks to the side like this, picks the coin up. She's looking at it, 
right in her pocket, <laughs> you know, and I mean, she knew what it was. She looked at the thing right in her pocket. Her life just changed. That's the first seed. You can do a lot with gospel tracting. And you don't have to be some big, brave, bold evangelist that gets out there and let me tell you, you know, and stuff and preaching the word and stuff, you know, and, and standing on the street corner and, and the Bible said, you know, it's like, if the Lord ever leads you to that, great, praise the Lord. But start out small. Start out small, brethren. Plant some seeds. Okay? And there's a bunch more we could go over too as far as gospel tracting is concerned. Make sure that they're using the King James Bible. Make sure that they're not some easy believism thing or whatever else. You know, those are the things that you check on. And make sure that they're not linking back to corrupt websites or whatever else. All right? So those are some suggestions. And um, I know there's also a brother. Um, I'll say your name, brother. Brian Harlow, uh, friend of the ministry. And he actually has a video on how to make your own gospel tract. Uh, that's that's another thing. Got to say that too. Uh, watch the video. I'm going to try to put some links down if I can remember. If not, then put your own links down there, brother. <laughs> you know, But there's ways that you can set up things and format things. Um, I don't know if I can get over to it. Uh, let me, excuse me here. I'm just going to kind of go past the camera. Uh, let me see if I have any others. Uh, okay, I guess not. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find, see if I have any uh, gospel coins around up here in my office, but I don't. So, um, this is one I wrote years and years and years ago. Just, you know, printed it out on the computer, used for us in orange paper, so it really, you know, stands out and things like that. But, you know, I just, I wrote the thing and you know, passed out these things. I had the really old ministry address on the back there. It's not the ministry address anymore, but um, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. I've even heard of brethren that have literally written out their testimony and put some scriptures in written by hand, fold the piece of paper up and then go out and hand it to people. I mean, plant seeds. It's a wonderful thing. It's actually, you know, really fun too. I mean, there's all kinds of ideas that you can do. You know, I mean, gospel coins are great. I mean, you can go out and you can just, you know, throw them and stuff like that. And um, we actually had this thing one time. We got a little slingshot, you know, and, and we'd hold a gospel coin, you know, you hold the, driving around, you go in with the window down, you know, ting, you know, fling it out into a parking lot or whatever else, you know. It's great fun. You can have a lot of fun with gospel tracting. Uh, you don't have to be, it's not some ultra scary thing and whatever else. You're planting seeds. So, that is going to be it. If you have any suggestions or anything else, uh, other ideas and things for creative tracting, um, comment section below. Uh, get creative. Uh, another, I got lots of ideas coming to the mind. Um, another fun one is to take a small tract or a gospel coin, even, and the six packs of beer. You know, you got the handles on the side, the little cutout. Go on over there and put the little thing down in. That's <laughs> great. So. And, you know, the Lord will protect you through it. And the Lord will bless you greatly when you do this, too. Um, so, there's a whole lot more I could say, but I'm just like, okay, I think I've said what I needed to say. Be creative. Make sure that they have the King James Bible on them. Okay? So, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching. And have fun tracting.